What's up guys? I am headed to the garden because I want to sit inside of the garden and talk to you about my 2023 garden plans and kind of show you the layout. So this is definitely going to be a sit down type of video. I'm going to be showing you guys my garden plan for uh, the layout of where I'm going to plant stuff. What I did was basically draw my garden with all of the beds. Very, very rough sketch. I even added in the forever garden beds. Obviously, this is not true to size or anything like that. I kind of just sketched out everything so I can know how many beds I have, where they're located, because I am going to be adding in some cattle panel trellises. There's a cat, right? <laughs> just rubbing my, <laughs> rubbing me and distracting me. <laughs> so anyway, I am going to be adding some cattle panel trellises as well as the trellis that is going down the middle. I'm going to be taking that cattle panel out and adding in netting. So I'm going to take those two cattle panels that's there currently <laughs> Yeah. and and then using them as um creating hoops and so i am when you see this there are some spots that has um some cattle panels that do not have cattle panels at the moment but that's because i'm going to be using the two that's already in there and then i do have some other cattle panels other there that we didn't utilize for when we build I don't know the last thing that we built. Oh, when we built the cattle panel hoop house. I have two extra cattle panels for there too, so I might be utilizing them in the garden. I also use just this regular calendar to talk about seed starting. And so this is just a regular calendar that I got from Walmart. Um, and it came with this. It was a two-year planner, 2022 to 2023. And I'm going to be showing you um, what I plan on starting each week because I have it list out each week from now until the end of April, I believe. Maybe it even goes into May. Let's see. Yep, it actually goes into May. Our last frost date is March 27th is the estimate, uh, estimated uh, date. But first, I think we'll talk about the garden plan. So I didn't count how many beds I have, so I can't tell you how many beds I'll have off the top of my head, but I did draw every single bed that I have in here, and I'm going to be talking to you about where I place things and why. So I think the first thing to note off of my garden plan is that this is would be the entrance, entrance down here, and so these would be the fence with the forever garden beds, and this side would be the fence with the forever garden beds, and then this would be the fence on this side, and this would be the other fence where I have forever garden beds as well as um, wood side beds and then it goes down to the log raised beds. So these are the log raised beds. I have eight log raised beds, three this way, three this way, one on this side and one on this side. There is one uh, log raised garden bed. So it is this log raised garden bed right here is where I have perennial flowers at. So right now, this is echinacea that you see that is dead. But then I think you can see the green coming back. That is delphinium, I believe. So I know I have echinacea in here, delphinium, and I also have a hollyhock hill here. And then I have lilies. And so right here on my garden plan is right there where you see flowers i am actually thinking about putting a trellis up here and then having another space for tomatoes and then kind of uh because when i was looking at my plan it fits better to have cattle panels all throughout these log raised beds because cattle panels are 16 feet long and in my log raised i mean in my wood size raised beds they're only six feet and so if i want to ever put tomatoes out this way i would have to cut a cattle panel to six feet there's a cat between my legs i would have to cut a cattle panel to six feet and it just doesn't break evenly if a cattle panel is 18 feet i could see cutting it into three you know individual pieces but with it being 16 feet and my beds being six feet it just makes sense to keep uh tomatoes up front here so anyway like i was saying so this bed i am going to add a cattle panel here and plant tomatoes here and i divide i uh, divided one and a half feet by 16 feet for because the cattle panel is 16 feet and i got 11 point something and so i am going to plant 11 tomatoes on each cattle panel so I'm going to add a cattle panel here, plant 11 tomatoes. Then this next bed, which would be this second garden bed, 
it has it doesn't have a trellis either but i'm going to add a trellis there and plant tomatoes i'm also going to plant if you can see ground cherries tomatillos and then sunberries here and then the bed behind it right now i'm going to uh, it already has which is this bed that has the dead cabbages it already has a cattle pen i planted tomatoes there last year so i'm going to plant tomatoes there again as well as summer squash and then this bed right here i have a cattle panel right here i am going to plant tomatoes there as well as basil and marigolds is going to be between each of my tomato plants but i'm also it's this bed right here and it's garlic in the front so I'm going to have the garlic in the front, tomatoes in the back, and then bush beans along with them. Then I have my two beds right here that are going to stay asparagus. Then I have this bed right here that has a, a trellis, but it's fell down. It's going to have tomatoes there. It already has garlic planted there, but I'm going to plant my winter squash there. And then I have a bed right here, which is this log race bed. It does have garlic in front of it, and it has that rosemary. And it says the garlic, the tomatoes, and potatoes. I will just take a moment and say that they, people normally tell you do not plant nightshades together because they attract the same pests. So you, like maybe tomatoes, peppers, and potatoes, they all, you know, would attract nightshade plants. And so you wouldn't want to plant them next to each other. I'm going to go ahead and plant my tomatoes and my potatoes next to each other but that is on me so i'm just putting a disclaimer that you might not want to do that in your garden i'm going to do that as an experiment for my garden and because of when i was laying out stuff i want all my potatoes to be in one individual spot and i do plan on planting a lot of potatoes and so that is why i'm choosing this year to plant my potatoes with my tomatoes but just be aware that it is cautioned not to plant potatoes with your tomatoes Moving on to my cross raised bed, I have three dots here. So all of these dots that you see all over my plan is for vining crops. In this specific area, I plan on doing pumpkins. And then, so pumpkins will be right here in this cross raised bed. As you can see, there are sticks sticking out and these are fruit trees. But I plan on planting like a pumpkin here, here, and here. So three pumpkin vines on each, you know, uh, length and then right here this one right here where it has the four dots uh, is this bed i plan on planting watermelon here specifically seedless watermelon because seedless watermelon you need a pollinator and then you need at least three seeds and so there will be um so I, for my seedless watermelon varieties i think i have three packs of them i am going to give them their individual bed because them needing you can't just plant it's not like you plant with watermelons that have seed you just plant one watermelon plant and then it could produce like four watermelons on a vine with seedless watermelons you need a pollinator one and then you need um the seed ones that will actually produce the seedless watermelon and so i think that's why mines didn't do well last year because i think only the pollinator one germinated and not the actual other seeds because they come in two different packets i don't have one to show you right now but when i plant them out this year i am going to start them indoors so that i know what is germinating rather than planting them straight into the ground then right here right next to we have the pumpkins then the seedless watermelon i have this trellis and it is this right here I am going to plant kukuzis here and tromboncino squash, but then, and that's going to go up the trellis, but on the outside of the trellis, down this whole row, up to about this bed right here, I plan on planting watermelons because I want to utilize that whole landscape fabric right there to allow the watermelon vines to grow out that way. And so I think that would just be a good use of space to kind of like have a watermelon patch along this area right here since I don't have beds right there. The only space where it will not be watermelon is these two raised beds because obviously you can see that they do not go out and so for that one one i'm going to do honeydew right there at the back because i feel like the honeydew can vine that way and for this one i'm going to do corn because it will stand tall and it doesn't need anything to go that way all of these forever garden beds with the exception of this small circle one the small gray circle one right there and then one over there somewhere i'm going to be using all of these forever garden beds that 
uh, turquoise one right there in the front um, that has the dead, dead cauliflower. I'm going to let that be my sweet potato bed. And then the rest of them, I am going to be planting my brassicas in the, that I just planted inside the garden. That video should be out by the time you see this one. And then the small one, I'm going to plant one tomato in there. The small gray one, I'm going to plant one tomato in there because I do have three of the trellises that is from Forever Garden Beds, the tomato trellises. And I think having just one tomato in there where I can like experiment and not prune it and just let it grow really big and see how it does will be beneficial. And so I am going to have three tomatoes in these Forever Garden Beds with the Forever Garden Bed trellis and not prune them. So this raised, uh, this in-ground bed, as I was saying, I'm taking this out and I'm going to put netting, but I am going to have cherry tomatoes. So this whole length, I did extend it down this way because it only went to 32 feet, but then I added that extra feet right there. And I'm going to plant 26 cherry tomatoes in here. This is about 40 feet and so I'm planting my tomatoes one and a half foot um, apart and so I'm going to plant 26 cherry tomatoes here. If you're keeping count, 11 tomatoes times one, two, three, four, five, six log raised beds and then the 26 cherry tomatoes. The ones up front are going to be my paste and my slicers and then the ones in this in-ground bed is going to be my cherry tomatoes this bed up in the front where obviously this pool won't be here but in this areas these beds right here i try to save those so i have a honeydew right here in this one and this one i have winter squash and in the next one i have another seedless watermelon there and there because it can again vine out that way and have take over that space because i don't plan on anything there and it can take over this space. So basically when I was coming up with my garden plan, I just tried to think of, because I do want to grow lots of melons, I tried to, um, the choices I had was either putting a watermelon patch inside of the duck area and um, having a watermelon patch over there. I also thought about maybe planting determinate tomatoes over there. You guys let me know if you guys think I should build a, a pumpkin patch or a watermelon patch or something along that lines inside of the duck area and kind of fencing them off of half of the area and um, just letting it sprawl and go crazy because that is an option. And like I also said, I thought about putting two cattle panel trellises over there or netting and even planting determinate tomatoes over there because they grow to a determined size and seeing how it does over there. You guys let me know. Do you guys think I should have a tomato patch over there? Do you guys think I should have pumpkins, melons, watermelons? I'm all open for suggestions. This is not, even though I wrote all this down, this was just a plan to know that um, what I'm planting and so that I can know how many seeds to start and stuff like that. But I have a big enough garden to make changes and I'm all ears if anybody has any uh, advice that they want to give me or any things that I have not thought about. Some other interesting things is I left my onion bed because that's where I have onions now. I left the spicy pepper bed because spicy peppers want to seed there and I'm assuming that they will germinate and come back. So I'm leaving that my spicy pepper bed. I'm leaving these two cattle panels, which are these, as my bean beds because, again, beans want to seed there. And I was just putting bean seeds back into the ground. And so I'm assuming, again, that beans will just start germinating when the spring comes. And I, so I don't plan on moving them. I plan on still that being a pole... Um, a pole arch trellis of beans i will say that on one of them i had noodle beans and i don't plan on growing noodle beans this year and so one of them might start growing noodle beans which will be fine i'm just not planning on planting noodle beans this year but i do plan on leaving it as a bean trellis something interesting on this list that you will not see i did put peppers right here because i'm thinking about i had thought about just planting sweet peppers um, inside of the hoop house but then as I was thinking I thought maybe I could plant some peppers outside as well and so this is not like a final area I'm not sure I'm thinking about maybe planting some peppers outside and some in the greenhouse and see what does the best but that's not a final thing I do have a hoop right here that is not there right now that I plan on planting um, some melons that are small enough three to five pounds where like the sugar baby watermelon and stuff like that where I can trellis some melons but then also have some bigger melons growing at the um, back side 
of the raised beds. Some other things that I thought about was I did want to have a succession of zinnias and sunflowers. And so on the back of this is going to be a bean trellis, but on the back I'll have zinnias and on the back of this one I'll have sunflowers, which I did the same thing over here. I have zinnias over here, but I'm not going to plant the zinnias in every bed at the same time. I'm going to give them space. As Same thing with the sunflowers. I'm going to give them probably two weeks, so do like two rounds. I'm going to do like two rounds of planting zinnias and sunflowers two weeks apart, so that way when... Um, one set of zinnias is going to seed that I still have at least another two weeks before the others is going to seed because last year I planted all my zinnias and all my sunflowers at the same time. They all went to seed at the same time and I didn't plant new ones. And so then I was left without, um, I was left with just dying dead zinnias and I want to avoid that this year. So another thing that you might be thinking of if you're keeping track is that's about 95 tomatoes uh, places in my garden. And that is a lot of tomatoes, but I've never personally had great, great success with growing like big slicer type tomatoes, but I want to. And so I, my plan is to grow as many tomatoes as I can. And if I get a handful um, from, you know, a couple plants, I just want to be able to grow. Hey, Nehemiah. Hi. I just want to be able to grow as many tomatoes as I can that I can fit and then be able to test the varieties and see what lasts, what doesn't. Because last year, my cherry tomatoes and other years too that I've grown tomatoes, cherry tomatoes do and like paste tomatoes, I can get them to grow. But like big slicers, I always have a problem with. And so I really want to grow as much tomatoes as I can so that I know that I have enough tomatoes for when it's time for preserving that I can preserve things like the pasta sauce, the pizza sauce and spaghetti sauce and all that type of things and um, have enough tomatoes that I don't have to buy any. So I hope that gave you like an understanding of my thought process and while I was planting my garden to kind of like help you where to plant stuff and where to um, the be best place to put things because I know when I first started gardening and I was following the uh, square foot gardening method I saw like oh watermelons just need like a square foot or two of growing space and so I kind of like put it in the middle and then what happened was if you're familiar with growing watermelons and they grow like a eight foot vine is that they crawled over everything that I've had planted around them because I planted them in the middle thinking they just need two foot of square a square space two feet of square two feet two square feet yeah two square feet of space and then that was not true they ended up crawling over everything if I was like growing in a small space and I did want to plant a watermelon I would just say plant it at the edge so that way it can come out and not go and not plant it in the middle where it's going to grow over all of your plants and that is what happened to me so with picking my places to have trailing things like big watermelons that I can't trellis up as, and pumpkins and stuff like that, I tried to pick the areas of my garden where they have space around them so when they come out the bed, which they will do, that they are not going to affect and kill other plants. So I hope that kind of helped you um, and may give you some ideas for your garden. I didn't go over every single bed, but I will um, take a photo maybe or just go over my um my plan very slowly and maybe you can like pause the video at the bottom i did kind of put totals of what i think will be inside this garden so it says like 95 tomatoes um 16 cantaloupes 15 pumpkins 16 cucumbers 15 winter squash uh four areas of bush beans but then not including that log raised bed um nine places for pole beans and stuff like that while i was counting So now that we talked about the garden plan, I want to show you what I plan on starting and when and just kind of talk to you about that. So I have, like I showed you, my planner right here and I put, I just basically went on the farmer's almanac and saw one was uh, put in my zip code. It told me, you know, where you're at. And then it basically gave me a date of when I should start everything. And using the farmer's almanac, I just copied basically and paste, but, you know, wrote it down of when I should start everything week by week. But then I also did some adjustments. So right now I started my brassicas um, 
and it didn't tell me to start my brassicas till the 23rd but i use scents and based off of last year and like when i planted last year i look back at my notes and i decided that i was going to plant my brassicas um at the ninth and so and then just because i put everything on a monday does not mean that i have to plant it on that day i'm just putting that i need to that i should plant it that week so it could start on a sunday it can you know and then end on a thursday or i can do everything on the monday or whatever i'm just putting exactly what needs to be started that week on that one day so that way i know what needs to be planted um that week Another thing that I did was last year I planted my peppers at my 12 week um, before my last frost date and that would have been the second. But I was busy doing house stuff and so I didn't actually uh, start any seeds last week. And so I will be starting my spicy peppers and my sweet peppers as well as my celery at the 10 week mark. I did plant my brassicas but if you see it's a snapdragon, bachelor bud, and lisianthus. I decided that I wasn't going to plant those things. One, because as I was doing my garden plan, I didn't have a space for those. I only made space for sunflowers, zinnias, marigolds. And so those are the flowers that I'm gonna be focusing on. Um, and really I want to focus on producing more food um, than flowers, even though I think flowers are beautiful. And um, they were, you know, I thought the snapdragons and bachelor buttons were so lovely and lisianthus last year. But I think that I, since this is gonna be my second year gardening in this garden, that I really want to just focus on soil health and producing vegetables and then maybe next year um, or even in the fall planting more flowers but for now I decided that I'm going to focus on a certain amount of flowers or certain types of flowers and that are beneficial for majority of the season where bachelor button snapdragons and lisianthus are more cool weather flowers whereas um the marigolds, the zinnias, the sunflowers are more of the summer garden. And so those are the flowers that I want to focus on. So after my next week, I'm going to plant um, the peppers then and the celery on the 23rd, which is my ninth week, I have marigolds, oregano, and thyme. And then next to it, I have like how many I want to plant of each thing. I plan on planting or starting 140 sweet peppers, 40 spicy peppers, and 12 celery I do not plan on that's how many seeds I plan on going I actually only want 36 or less spicy pepper plants because that bed is a three by six and I plan on planting two every square foot which is 36 plants and so I'm thinking if I start 40 and I end up with less than 36 that would be enough to plant that whole bed and if I have extras then I can give those away sell them whatever I want same thing with the sweet peppers my original um, design was to keep all of my peppers my sweet peppers inside of the greenhouse because I'm thinking if I could get them hotter faster that they'll produce better because this um, <laughs> this year or this past summer um, they did take got off to a slow start and so yeah I'm just thinking if I could keep them protected and kind of manage their growing conditions maybe that would be you know different but Maybe that's a reason why I should plant them in both spaces. And with the marigolds, I plan on starting them earlier than I did last year just because they do take a while to flower. Can you stop that? <laughs> they do take a while to flower. And so I want to make sure that I'm planting them early enough to start flowering. Um, then the next week on the 30th, I have basil, eggplant, radish, tomato, and I did break up starting my tomatoes at different times. So at the eight week mark, I'm going to plant my slicers because my slicers um, and my determinate tomatoes because those the determinate tomatoes are going in the greenhouse. So I can plant those out a little earlier. And then my slicers because they do take a longer time to produce that big tomato. And so I plan on starting those first. And also to help with like garden burnout and like seed planting burnout and taking care of all those seedlings. The following week, which is going to be February, that is when I plan on starting my paste tomatoes, as well as my spinach and my radish. My radish, and that would be at my, the seventh week mark. At the sixth week mark, I plan on planting my cherry tomatoes because those usually produce the fastest and have um, take the least amount of time to produce tomatoes. And so that is why I 
plan on starting them at the six week mark especially just to give my tomatoes a variety of different uh times to have them planted out into the garden basically what i did with everything is i went to the farmer's almanac saw when i should plant stuff put it down on here i made some adjustments based off of experience and growing last year also um made some judgment calls because i know um on my farmer's almanac it does not say to grow cauliflower in the spring but i'm gonna try to grow cauliflower in the spring i am hoping that planting cauliflower earlier will keep it from getting uh going to seed because that is basically why they tell you that it's too hot in my zone south carolina zone 8b to grow cauliflower in the spring because it just gets too hot too fast but i'm gonna try it because i'm a risk taker and so i am still planning on planting cauliflower um in the spring <laughs> but but just so you know you can just because i'm i'm telling you to follow the farmer's almanac you can definitely still make your own calls and experiment because what if it really works out for me and the farmer's almanac is telling me that it's not going to work out for me you know but then it does it is not a fact gardening is not based on facts it is or like, you know, that it's going to definitely happen just because they tell you, they can tell me to plant all these things or they can say that, you know, the last frost is, good, frost is gonna be March 27th, but then it comes April, whatever, cause it's all the weather and stuff like that. And so nobody has control over that, but the Lord. So the Farmer's Almanac does not know <laughs> everything, but they can give you their best judgment. And so that is why I am making a judgment call on that. So basically what I did was I put and then if I needed to transplant out something so I put transplant out brassicas but I already started my brassicas in January and so at this time when I'm transplanting them out they'll be about six weeks and so things like I have like carrots when I put carrots here I didn't put transplant out or like start outside because I know that I'm starting carrots outside and so I didn't necessarily put if I was starting it outside because I kind of just used common sense for things like radish and peas those are things that I all I always and carrots plant directly outside so outside and so I didn't necessarily put so outside um, but if there were plants I did if I was transplanting them I did put transplant so that I could know that this is the time that they say to transplant it and so I do hope that kind of like helped you um, this is how I set up my garden plant and it, like i said it goes all the way up until may like so on march another example march 6 i have melons but then i also have transplant out kohlrabi and then i have you know cucumbers so when i know that when it says march 6 that i'm not planting out cucumbers march 6 but i'm that's when i'm going to be starting it and then i also put when my last estimated frost date was and all of this information is based off of the farmer's almanac that is what and so if you're looking at and you're still planning your garden i would definitely suggest going to the farmer's almanac and looking up when's your last frost date and then it has a, a, a list there of everything that you can plant in a vegetable garden and then when you should plant it if it should be planted indoors if it should be planted outdoors if it should be transplanted and it has it for fall and for spring and so right now you would be looking at the spring one I also put, you know, when I'm going to be, when the farmer's almanac told me to plant potatoes is the same day um, and the week that they told me to transplant out my peppers and tomatoes, which is April 3rd. It is one week after my estimated frost date because even though it's an estimated frost date of March 27th, they want me to wait a week to make sure that the soil is at the high enough temperature and that, you know, there's, you're just basically, you know, cautious of a potential freeze. And but of course, you know, you sense and I did put even though I put transplant peppers and tomatoes on the third. I also put transplant peppers and tomatoes on the 10th because I know on the farmer's almanac where it tells you, you know, transplant out at this time or start at this time. They give you a time frame. So with tomatoes, they say you can either go by the moon or you can go by the dates. And so they tell you that you can like the best time to start tomatoes for your zone would be, you know, February 16th all the way till February 28th and so they give you like a time frame of when it is best to start tomatoes it's not just one specific day I put one specific day or one specific week on mine just because I needed a plan and I didn't want to 
have so many things that I'm planting on one day and so that's why I kind of spaced out my tomatoes just because I know I'm gonna be planting a variety of tomatoes and I wanted to space everything out so that I'm not um, experiencing burnout because seed starting burnout is a thing that last year I planted everything I think at one time and then when all those seedlings um, I know it was different because I was inside the house but once they all started getting bigger it was hard with grow lights and stuff like that and so I am happy to have the hoop house so that I know obviously that I won't run out of space hopefully of places to have my seed starting trays on the ground because I don't think that I'm going to be able to build shelves um, before I start s seed starting so I that's basically everything that I'm doing I wanted to share with you guys I did share a picture um, of what I was doing on Instagram in my stories if you guys are following me then that means you've seen it but even since then I've been working on it for about a week every night I'm just like looking at it and changing things and like I said if you guys have any interesting you know um, ideas or anything that I left out definitely let me know and um, help us out <laughs> and so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope this and you know gave you some ideas and encouraged you and all the things and so if you guys have any questions or anything like that leave it in the comments below and I will see you guys next time bye